EA's Exhibition for 2021. Thank you for coming. Can I ask you please to stand for the platform party? <laughs> My lords, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the Edinburgh Academy 2021 Senior School Exhibition. Welcome also to those pu pupils, parents and family attending virtually. Today we celebrate the year's achievements throughout the school, which have been many and varied despite the pandemic. And we also send our best wishes to those of you who are marking your last day in school today and are about to embark on your journey as academicals. Over 50 years ago, Joni Mitchell wrote Big Yellow Taxi, one of the first environmental protest songs, a song which includes the line, you don't know what you got till it's gone. That was never more true than of the last 15 months. Many of the things we took for granted were suddenly lost. For me, as chair of court, the loss was not just about the big occasions such as the Christmas service in St Mary's Cathedral or the Usher Hall concert where the whole school community comes together, it was more about the small moments, chatting with parents, pupils and staff over a bacon roll and coffee on a crisp autumn Saturday morning at Newfield, the sound of bagpipes in the yards and the laughter of children playing at Arboretum Road, even, dare I say it, being shouted at by Mr Tully for the cardinal sin of hissing S's at Wednesday evening choir practice. It makes the fact that we've been able to come together today particularly special. It is generally accepted that during the pandemic, independent schools have managed the challenges of continuing to provide education to their pupils far better than their state counterparts. And that as a result, the attainment gap is likely to widen further. A recent survey showed that a month into the first lockdown, only 6% of state funded secondary schools had managed to provide live online lessons for students with their teachers, compared with 72% of independent schools and that independent schools were seeing an increase of 25 to 30 per cent in applications from parents seeking to move their children from the state sector. The academy is no exception. We have experienced record levels of interest and we have waiting lists at all entry points in the school. Despite the economic challenges, we are maintaining our bursary provision to ensure that children from diverse cultural, social and economic backgrounds have the opportunity to experience an academy education. We must, however, ensure that we continue to deliver education that is based on a clear vision and set of values. It is now nearly 10 years since we last reviewed our vision and values. And as we move to our bicentenary in 2024, it is an opportune time to refresh these to ensure that they remain relevant and reflective of the school it is, as it is today. This work is being led by Claire Hancocks at the Senior School and Lorna Hatetkin at the Junior School, and they will be engaging with a wide range of stakeholders. The outputs from this will reform a court strategy day in October, where we will start to frame the strategic plan for the school for the next five years. I hope to be able to share our new strategy with parents, staff, pupils, and the wider academical community in the course of the next academic year. Continuing to deliver first class education, however, requires continuing investment in our facilities. Despite the disruption caused by the pandemic, the school was able to complete the extension to the Science Centre and the widening of the link between the Yards and Donaldson's. The court took the difficult decision in March of last year to pause the Learning Commons project because of the pandemic. I'm delighted that with the generous support of parents, staff, alumni and the Eric Stevenson Trust, we have been able to commence the build this month with an anticipated opening date of August 2022. These new facilities will allow us to meet the changing nature of the learner journey in the 21st century and equip our pupils to deal with a unique set of global challenges. 
The Edinburgh Academy was established in the midst of the first industrial revolution and will celebrate its bicentenary in the midst of the fourth. One of the most urgent tasks for the children of the fourth industrial revolution will be to reverse the climate change crisis set in motion by the first. To meet the zero carbon target by 2050 will require innovation at a rate and scale never before achieved in human history. And our academics in schools and universities will be the drivers of that. The timescale also means the solutions must be found by the generation of leavers who sit in this marquee today. To those of you who are leaving today, I would like to say this. One of your fellow academicals was one of the three greatest scientists the world has ever known. When Einstein was asked if he stood on the shoulders of Newton, he replied, no, I stand on the shoulders of Maxwell. James Clark Maxwell changed the world. Each of you who is leaving today has a unique set of skills and talents, and each of you has the capacity to go out, see the world, and to change it. A school is, of course, nothing without its staff. And I would like to thank all of the staff, ably led by the rector, the head teacher, the bursar, and the senior management team for their dedication and hard work over the last year. A huge amount was asked for you and you rose to the challenge magnificently. We have also been extremely privileged to have a number of loyal and long-serving colleagues and I would like everyone to join me in showing appreciation and thanks to the following members of staff who are retiring today, having given many years of service to the school. Alistair McPherson with 18 years of service. Debbie Carr, with 19 years of service. <laughs> and finally, John Meadows, with an incredible 33 years and one term of service. This summer of term was his 100th at the school. <laughs> I know the rector will be saying something more about each of them in his speech. Governing a school requires teamwork and I would like to thank my fellow court members for their contribution and commitment to the school, particularly over the last year or so, where they made themselves available, often at short notice, as we reacted to a fast-moving situation. I would particularly like to thank my vice chair and committee chairs, Mark Galloway, Vinit Kurana and Craig Scott for their support and advice. Finally, I would also like to thank all the parents and especially the parents of our leavers for your support and encouragement. I hope that you will not be strangers to the school in the future. We now move to the formal part of the proceedings and to congratulate our pupils. Due to COVID restrictions, we are unable to sing our opening hymn together, so I invite the exhibition choir to sing Unto the Hills. Shall pre 
Thank you, choir. Lovely to hear some music again. We move now to the presentation of prizes, starting with the co-curricular activities uh, and those awarded at the Games. The Hutton Challenge Trophy for Senior Boys is awarded to Max Carlick. The GJM Aiken Memorial Prize for Best Senior Boys Performance in Throwing Events and the DC Fairburn Challenge Cup for Senior Boys Shot Putt, both awarded to Adam Peters. <laughs> the Archibald Todrick Challenge Trophy for Senior Boys Javelin to Joel Davenport. The best senior girls performer in throwing events to Freya Simpson. The WR Stevenson Challenge Cup senior boys long jump to Benjamin Murray. The WM Wallace Challenge Quake senior boys high jump the RF Simpson Challenge Cup 100 metres, the RJL Wilson Challenge Senior Boys 200 metres to Harvey Cameron Barr. <laughs> this next one gets even longer. Richie, I hope you've got big pockets. Uh, the Centenary Challenge Cup Senior Boys 400 metres, the Lawrence Young Challenge Trophy Senior Boys 800 metres, the Alexander Gilmore Challenge Trophy Senior Boys 1500 metres, the Jamie Henderson Quake for Best Senior Boys Performance in Track Events, and the St George's Quake for Services to Athletics, all to Richie Gardner. And then to the presentation of prizes awarded at the Pipes and Drums competition. For best effort at pipe band drumming, Caroline Gardner. <laughs> the McDonald Cup for drumming to Finn Cunningham. Another one with big pockets. The Plockton Quake for jig playing, the Brown Shield for Pibroch, the Brown Shield gold medal, and the Sloan Cup silver medal to Hugo McPherson. And then more big pockets, the Brown Shield silver medal, the Sloan Cup for pipe playing and the Sloan Cup gold medal to Richie Gardner. <laughs> and now we move to the presentation of prizes for sixth classes. The best senior girls performer at the Games is Chloe Petrie. <laughs> so, tribute to Chloe, that's usually in one of the other sections. It's unusual for sixth to win that prize. The Maxwell Bowl for Senior Girls Tennis to Caitlin Elliott. The Fives Under-18 Trophy for Girls to Holly Brown. The Most Improved Award for Girls Hockey to Iona Harrison.
The Kim Needle Sculpture Prize is awarded to Darcy Moore. The Gardener Prize for Printmaking goes to Isha Witz. The Hamilton and Inches Trophy for Jewellery and Silversmithing to Polly Thompson. The Corporal's Cup for Best CCF Cadet in Sixth Year, Caroline Gardner. <laughs> the Thomas Grace Trophy for Most Improved Hockey Player and the Ernst & Young Prize for Higher Business Studies, both awarded to Mac Ingalls. The sixth Ernst & Young Prize for Economics and the Aitken Prize for Mandarin in sixth, both awarded to Finn Cunningham. <laughs> the Aitken Prize for Spanish in sixth to Cecily Miller. and the Aitken Prize for German in sixth to Sophie Portier. <laughs> Another triple, the James Michael Blair Prize for English in sixth, the Aitken Prize for French in sixth, and the Higher Religious Studies and Philosophy Prize to David Bain Jardine. The Elder Prize for Acting will be awarded in absentia to Leila Montague and the Elder Prize for Drama to Domi Nimic. <laughs> the Kenneth Armstrong Prize for Computing Science in Six to Fionn Smith. The Ferguson Medal and H.N. Boyd Prize for Mathematics in Six to Rory Kemp. <laughs> the Mackenzie Prize for Physics in Six to Holly McCluskey. The Higher Biology Prize and the Fieldhouse Prize for Chemistry in Sixth, both awarded to Murray Kiernan. <laughs> the Sixth Design Technology Prize to Rosie Tofts. The Higher Physical Education Prize to Archie Craigie Halkett. <laughs> the Modern Studies Prize in Sixth to Archie Powell. <laughs> the Stewart Prize for History in Sixth to Thomas Carey. Another double, the J. Wilson Patterson Prize for Classics in Six and the Six Geography Prize to Jana Hamilton. <laughs> the Burness Trophy for Painting to Maya Lowe.
And then the last of the awards for sixth to the Duncan Pettigrew Memorial Prize for Art in sixth to Georgia Collins. <laughs> and I'd now like to invite the rector to speak. Sorry, that's been me every day for the last 15 months. I apologise. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Court of Directors, staff and students of the Edinburgh Academy, welcome to Exhibition 2021. I wasn't sure whether we were going to say those words. I welcome you to Anderson Row. Rather than the grandeur of the Assembly Hall and this year's exhibition and end-of-year ceremony, rather than the magnificence of the Assembly Hall, where Prince William recently represented the Queen in his address to the Assembly of the Church of Scotland, and perhaps without the pomp and ceremony of a state ceremonial event, I welcome you instead to a small tent stuck neatly between the main hall and next to our main garbage bins. <laughs> While this venue may not have the magnificence of the Assembly Hall, at least it is an ideal location if you wish to recycle some cardboard or other renewable resources. It is wonderful to be able to share this exhibition with real people and not solely on a screen, as we've had the last year while in full lockdown. Apologies to those of you who are watching this online rather than being here in person. With the physical distancing required to maintain any level of COVID security, and with increased infections across the whole of Scotland, this seems the safest way to celebrate the careers of both our departing staff as well as our leavers, the class of 2021. We seem to have spent far too long in the last year in front of a screen, and therefore it is wonderful to be able to interact and share something together in person that has such resonance not only with our leavers this year, but also their parents who have supported this school for a considerable period of time and for whom today possibly marks the end of their relationship with our community. Whilst discussing the idea of the EA community, can I direct you to the I Love EA documents that are scattered around the marquee today? As our court chair just said in her opening remarks, we're in the process of updating our visions and values for the school and part of this process involves researching and exploring what students and parents feel about this school and value in an EA education. There is no better time to do this than on the final days of school. If you can add your thoughts and ideas, there are collection areas for handing in those around the marquee. Before I begin my address in earnest, I must thank you all for your understanding and acceptance of our COVID protocols and in allowing this event to proceed. We have discussed for a long time the fine line between when a marquee with no side walls on actually becomes a gazebo and on removing said side walls becomes a suitable outdoor venue in accordance with COVID protocol item 50-42F on page 74 of the 19th set of guidance that schools have had since all this began. Each set of guidance has been discreetly but importantly different to Boris's mad plans for freedom just to prove that Scotland is doing it differently and that little much better. If you sense my frustration, then please do not be alarmed. Whilst being rector and overseeing our responses in the fight against a global pandemic, it's certainly been an interesting period in my career. But I'm delighted to report that we finished the year with no reported COVID fatalities in our school. Consider that for one moment. No reported COVID fatalities. These words should never be a measure of a success of a school. A student reaching their potential, students finding happiness, success in events like sport, students and staff going on to individual and collective brilliance, exciting and wonderful career developments and progression. Yes, all of those. Fatalities, no. It's the peculiarity of how these events have altered the perspective by which we view the world. 
To all of you, I thank you for your resilience, your tolerance, your acceptance, and your support in what have been exceedingly difficult circumstances. That we end the year with such a broad collection of smiling faces, full of confidence, excitement, and celebration, reflects all we've achieved in the last 16 months together. Thank you. I'd very much like also to thank the members of our staff, both academic and support staff, who've worked so tirelessly to ensure that education has continued despite the pressures of COVID. They are the bedrock on which this community is built, as well as the sea wall on which the destructive waves of school life often break. They provide the quiet harbour of safety and sanctuary at this school and have been most needed as the strong prevailing easterly that has blown the storm of COVID in our direction has raged throughout 2021. I would like to extend my significant thanks to the entire team for all they have done to get us safely to Exhibition 21. Thank you very much indeed. You will see today that I am, for the first time for an exhibition, dressed in traditional Scottish dress and sport sporting the McNaughton Tartan. The McNaughton Tartan fitting is my family's tartan. Today I wear not the traditional McNaughton, but instead the weathered McNaughton, a less favoured version of this particular tartan. My more traditional kilt has not made it through COVID. It has been locked away in a cupboard since Burn Supper 2020, and a small family of moths have been enjoying their self-isolation by munching their way through it. And today, it is the weathered version that I wear. The definition of weathered is worn down by a long exposure to the atmosphere. And I would suggest that is precisely what it has felt like for these last 16 months. I imagine at times we've all felt that, that weathered and worn down feeling that COVID has presented to us. The unrelenting pressure of trying to live as normal a life as we can while still abiding to protocols. I'm sure we've all felt weathered, battered and bruised by what we've had to go through. However, I much prefer the other definition of weathered. And let me use it in context first. The ship has weathered the storm. And in this definition, it gives me hope and strength and positivity when looking forward. It's that old adage of having a positive mindset after all. We will have been weathered by the events of the last few months, but not in that first definition, but in the more positive and uplifting second definition. We are stronger, tougher, and ready for when we are next forced out of the deep, calm, slow-moving pools of life and out into the chaos and excitement of the turbulent flow of the riffles of white water of life. Together we have weathered the storm. And weathered is the theme of my speech today, not because I think it's a fitting theme for the period we are living in, but also in honour of Dr Carr, our beloved Head of Geography, who retires today alongside two other senior members of Common Room. Dr Alan, Alistair McPherson retires today as Head of Biology, having served 18 years at the Academy. Dr McPherson, like Dr Carr and Mr Meadows, is a fierce academic a learned scientist who has operated within the highest science circles and has accumulated a vast store of collective knowledge over his career. Alistair is a hugely respected member of the heads of the department and his wisdom and sage advice has soothed many an emotional conversation or guided groups out of circular conversations. He is sensible, brave and his intellectual approach to school life is shown in the wide range of roles he has held throughout his career, always learning and always developing his intuition and his understanding of human nature. He focuses on the education of the whole person and his wide knowledge that encompasses martial arts, meditation, bike maintenance and preparing Oxbridge medics, or in his past life as a housemaster, immersed in that complex but life-changing world of pastoral work, has had a significant and long-lasting impact on anyone who has been taught by him. I was going to do something clever with biology in my speech today, but unfortunately, I was terrible at biology at school. And if I try to do something for biology, this speech will go on so long, it won't as much end, but evolve. <laughs> I won't attempt anything with him other than 
I love tardigrades. More on tardigrades later. Before the tardigrades, I would like to invite Dr. McPherson up to the stage to receive our thanks, congratulations, and to take this small gift as a token of his service to the school. Deborah Carr retires after 19 years at the Academy, having had an enormous impact in so many areas of school life, academically in the geography department, partially in guiding her seniors through the UCAS process and the trials of life in general, in field work on the D of E, where her love of the outdoors shines through, in trips up to Blair House on scuba diving and other exciting foreign expeditions. Debbie has done it all, including her inspirational cycle across the USA and from Canada to Mexico. She has widened the horizons for our students and our staff and has made them aware of the world in which they live. In her leaving speech, she described teaching at EA as the best job ever. And it is. Because of all of you. And all of you. It's what we have together that makes this place. It's the small things that add up to a huge collective. And at times, it's the pieces that we miss the most. Hence that feeling of being weathered, of being hunkered down in a big waterproof, hat pulled low to the eyebrows and facing into the school, the wind whipped rain and dark. That's probably why most of us feel weathered at this moment. Debbie has resisted weathering for years. She has, in fact, many of the properties of gabbro or granite, both intrusive igneous rocks. She, like them, is tough, reliable, steadfast and true, with few, if any, lines of weakness. They resist weathering and are capable of withstanding great pressure, pressure for extended periods of time. As any good geographer knows, in fact, Dr Carr is not being weathered today, for today marks the day where she is finally eroded. As today she is leaving and moving on, most likely by bike. And in that transportation away, therefore, she is finally succumbing to erosion. The difference between weathering and erosion, of course, as any good geographer knows, is that weathered material remains in situ, whereas eroded material is transported away. In her honour, though, I will litter this speech with as many good geographical terms as I possibly can. It's a £10 prize for the person who is first to guess how many geographical prize, uh, terms I use in this speech, and the prize must be awarded before the pipe band plays their final note this afternoon. In doing this, I hope also to honour John Meadows, our retiring Head of English, who I hope will appreciate this literary exercise in attempting this geological feat. Let's just pr pray this speech does not progress at glacial pace. If you are counting, by the way, that's now 23. I would like to invite Dr. Carr up to the stage to receive our thanks and congratulations and to take this small gift as a token of her service. They come hard and fast now, so you're going to have to count quickly. And that brings me on to John Meadows. Let me start with a short extract from Walt Whitman. Again, in keeping with my theme today. Oh, Captain, my Captain, our fearful trip is done. The ship has weathered every rack. The prize we sought is won. The port is near. The bells I hear. The people are exulting. While follow eyes the steady keel the vessel grim and daring. I find this particularly uh, fitting, especially given all we've been through in the last few months 
and John has become someone who I admire enormously and have nothing but respect and admiration for what he has achieved in his time with us. John retires as head of English after 33 years. In fact, John started at EA on the 1st of April 1988, and so the end of this term marks 100 terms at the school. Think on that for a moment. 100 terms at a school. He has seen the ebb and flow of the school over a prolonged period of time. He has witnessed change, both in our demographics, as school roles have expanded and contracted over time, as well as in educational changes and seismic shifts that we have endured. As curriculum has changed, exam boards have developed new and interesting ways to test people. He has remained loyal and honest and fair, calm and measured, even when involved in heated discussions, thoughtful and respectful, slow to chide and swift to bless. He has remained as true as the needle on a compass, and in doing so, he has in turn won our utter respect and admiration. I know John will be utterly mortified by all of this. I thought I would just read for him this. It's from John Keats, Ode to a Summer Garden, and I thought this extract most fitting, as I see John as the lonesome traveller. Yet perhaps one downtrodden traveller lost in rhyme shall happen upon the shady solitude of this small oasis and happen upon the lilies nodding their freckled faces. And although the sweet summer shall fade, perchance fate this one death forbade. For though the frost dances its glistening dance across the ground, one solitary flower plucked from her summerlit bed in that season's finest hour rests between the pages of the poetry book brought by one lonesome voyager to be admired under the harsh wintry suns. And though snow snows long ago buried that calm summer haven, one flower knows not dark, dark snowstorms swooping like ravens. Forever and ever tis her bright regal head pillowed upon the words and ideals of the great masters here and gone. And eternally shall she rejoice in freedom of expression, in art, in those words living on through every winter of her vibrant heart. Quite rightly, the class of 2020 voted him the Francis Hardy Trophy winner last year as the member of the academic staff who have made the most significant impact on the lives of students at this school. That member of staff who always goes the extra mile and who worked tirelessly to help, support and educate. We were in lockdown one when John won that award and we never got the chance to uh, award it properly. This should be rectified. I'd like to ask Dr Brickman to come to the stage, please. Ladies and gentlemen, to honour that significant service that John Meadows has made to all members of the Edinburgh Academy, I'd like to just pause my speech and shine a light on Mr Meadows. In a moment, I'm going to invite Mr Meadows to the stage to re re receive the Francis Hardy Trophy. He is so modest and so softly spoken that he may not realise just how highly he is held within our community. He has earned the devotion and love of his students and the admiration and respect of his colleagues. And I would be honoured if we can present this trophy one last year to him so that he remembers our respect and our thanks for his significant service to the school. When Samuel and Kate in their head effort speech award the Francis Hardy to this year's recipient, I'll invite Mr Meadows back again to the stage to, prevent that, to present that trophy to this year's winners. I'm sorry you get to keep it for such a short time, John. <laughs> Thank you so much for everything you have given us. Ladies and gentlemen, after 100, year, 100, terms, <laughs> <laughs> after 100 terms of devoted service to this fine institution, I would like to invite Mr John Meadows to the stage to receive the Francis Tardy, Tardy Trophy, the small token of our appreciation and, of course, our applause.
Mr. David Black, who can't be here today, but I'm hoping is staring at us through a camera and uh, a TV somewhere, our much-loved catering manager, also decided to leave earlier this term, and we are unlucky that he cannot be here today. We hope to celebrate his 30 years at the school in December, at the Court of Directors dinner, when hopefully he can be a relaxed guest and enjoy a splendid meal, rather than being the creator of the meal itself. David Black has served 18,000 Christmas dinners during his time with us. He served five rectors, three bursars, and countless members of staff looking for that extra cheeky pudding or a donut. We were enormously lucky to have him with our staff. Alongside these venerable members of staff, who between them have devoted 100 years of their, of their lives to the school, are other members of the common room whose last day at the academy is today. Any academic year sees a delicate balance between the joyous celebrations for our departing students and the more wistful and sad goodbyes for departing colleagues, who perhaps have reached a watershed moment in their lives, and it's time for them to seek to chart a new course, seek rejuvenation in new challenges, but whose departures from the academy are perhaps not achieved as as much celebration as those for our leavers. We are very sorry to see them go. I would very much like to thank the following who are bound for new adventures elsewhere. Alex Glashen, Mrs Deborah Murray, Mrs Zeeway Sharwood-Smith, Mrs Rosario Pacheco-Cobos, Jane Porter, Dr Nicola Kiernan, who takes up a position as Head of Chemistry at the High School of Dundee, and Holly Ferguson, who heads away on maternity leave, and will be replaced by Mrs Joe Petit as Head of Department for the Year. Any teacher's life is measured and tracked by a repeating cycle of bells, lunch queues, activities, marking homework, writing reports and preparing students for exams. Amongst these regular routine events are also the joyous reasons why we all work in teaching. A shared smile between a student and a member of staff, a moment of fun and good humour that makes everyone laugh and releases the tension. Time spent getting to know individual students while guiding, shepherding and supporting young minds as they wrestle with the difficulties of growing up. Teachers do so much more than just transfer knowledge. And we are simply in awe of the collective impact that our departing and retiring members of staff have made in the lives of their students. Could we please have a round of applause for all the members of staff who today is their last day at the Academy? And now let me turn to the sevenths, the class of 2021 and our leavers this year. They have had the most particularly unusual year, which has finished without much of the celebration and fanfare that they deserve. This has not been an easy year, and I imagine they too feel weathered by the experiences that they have had. Two years of disrupted exams, disrupted sporting and co-curricular programmes, difficult and challenging opportunities to lead the school. And I'm sure many of them feel that they have been denied the fun that often comes with being in the sevenths. The speaker's dinner, burn supper, cup matches, the conference matches. COVID has meant many of these things have not happened. Thankfully, we have weathered the storm and we sit here together at the end of your time at the Academy with many of you destined for superb university courses, college opportunities or plans for extensive worldwide travel. We wish you all the very best of luck. When I gave my address in Exhibition 2020, I thank the members of the effort team for their years of outstanding service in what were very difficult circumstances, given the impact of the closure of the school in March. All effort teams are at the epicentre of all the good work that we do in this school, and we deliberately give them the latitude to explore their desires to improve the school and make it a better place. A year after thanking that team for their service, I stand here giving this address and feel enormously proud of the EFA team of, 21, of 2021, who have had a similarly disrupted year as leaders of the school. They felt the impact of COVID perhaps more acutely than even last year's group, but have never backed down, even when the whirlpool of uncertainty that COVID has presented us has caused such disruption. August 2020, in the beginning of this new school year, already seems like a very long time ago, and yet this year seems to have passed at an alarming rate of knots. The years of the school, in this, the leaders of this school in this academic year have been, had a very challenging year of leadership. Led by Samuel Chittleborough, Kate Shannon, Sam Bell and Lily Penman, 
Our efforts have responded to every challenge and have responded superbly. With year group bubbles, the removal of whole school assemblies, separated playgrounds, a restructured timetable, a separated lunch times to limit potential risks of trans transmission, leading the school has required creativity, endurance, passion, and an enormous amount of dedication. And many of the traditional ways in which our young people show leadership have been denied to them. Elements of mentoring have gone online, and those involved have worked hard to build relationships with juniors by using teams rather than a friendly conversation in the playground. We returned in August to restrictions and guidelines that meant we had to operate soft, safely and to limit potential transmissions of infection. None of those words should be in the operational practices of a school. The very nature of COVID has shaped, therefore, even the structural processes of the way we do business. Year group bubbles were formed and our community was divided. The cessation of all school assemblies further bred distancing and the realisation that teachers, as well as classmates, needed to be viewed as a potential source of transmission of infection rather than as friends, colleagues, allies, helpers, and that has grown the divide even further. We now have to cease this continental drift and bring back our fractured pieces back together again, like a modern day Pangaea. I do fundamentally believe that this has been a transformative shift in the way that we build relationships between, between the school. And a focus of next year's effort team will to be ensure that these relationships become strong again. Our effort team and our sevens have been sensational in doing this. And thank you for all your work. All schools should be safe places. Let me say that again. All schools should be safe places. We talk a great deal at the Academy about the creation of a sense of community where individuals are recognised and celebrated and are allowed to be in a welcoming and respectful environment which accepts people for who they are. Our staff, the effort team, our seniors and indeed all the pupils play a central role in pastoral care. And thank you so much for what you have managed to achieve. For all their amazing hard work and perseverance, therefore, I would like to invite the members of the this year's effort team to come to the stage and to take our applause. Ladies and gentlemen, the effort team of 2020 21. Take one and pass them on. Stand on the front line. Stand on the front line. With that in mind, I would like to take this opportunity to announce the effort team for next year, the heads of division, the deputy heads and the head efforts who will be leading this school next year. Once I announce their names, I'd like them to invite, to, I'd like to invite them forward to receive their effort ties from the outgoing team. Jamie Banks, David Bain-Jardine, Ross Cadzo, Jacob Carey, Thomas Carey, Archie Craigie Halkett, Finn Cunningham, Mariana Edward, Caitlin Elliott, Caroline Gardner, Imogen Goodwin, Iona Harrison, Louise Hawkins, Claire McKenzie, Holly McCluskey, Darcy Moore, Lewis Penman, Chloe Petrie, Archie Powell, Sam Ross, Theon Smith, Anna Springford, and Angel Wong. Please come up and receive your advice.
I'll get you one. I'll get you one. That was amazing. I wasn't expecting to, to produce an exercise in social awkwardness, but that was really amazing. It's like, which, which, tie do I, which, which tie do I take? I'm sorry about that. That was meant to be a lot smooth. In the planning, that was really smooth. So, what was I thinking? Jeez. In some other schools, effers or prefects taking on this role would be wished luck. As in, we wish you the best of luck. But I do not. I do not believe luck has a role to play as an effort. I wish them the very best in leading the school. Do the right thing. Trust your heart. Make good choices. Care for people. Remember leadership is about others, not you. And in the quiet of night, when you are wrestling with a difficult issue, trust what your heart is telling you. Our job is to leave this school in a better place than we found it at all times care and want to make a difference. Do that and you will not need luck. As heads of division next year, for Carmichael, Ross Cadzo, Ben Nussie and Caroline Gardner, heads of Coburn, Nico, Nico Templey and Iona Harrison, heads of Houses, Anna Springford and David Bain Jardine, and heads of Kinross, Chloe Peachy, Petrie and Archie Powell. As deputy head effers, Jacob Carey and Caitlin Elliott, and the head effers next year are Caroline Gardner and Finn Cunningham. <laughs> For those members of staff who betted short, you're probably getting now this is going to be big because I've got lots of colours to give out as well, so I hope you went into the hours as opposed to the minutes. <laughs> in other wards this year, we've also made presentations um, already, and I'd like to just to acknowledge those who were awarded music colours. In the seventh, Lily Penman um, and Nicholas Coley. In the sixth, David Bain Jardine, Finn Cunningham, Caroline Gardner, Peter Napier and Nicholas Templey were all awarded colours earlier. Um, there's one set of drama colours I'd like to present, and this is going to Sam Bell. sitting there going, you better give me colours if I'm going to be really... <laughs> Sporting colours. We are going to award some cricket half colours. There are no ties for this. They are stuck on a container ship somewhere between here and Southeast Asia. And so half colours do not need to rise for these awards. So much for the efficiency and reduced transport costs afforded by the economies of scale of containerisation. Half colours for cricket are awarded to, please don't rise, Hugo McPherson, David McRae, Rohit Devanathan and Neil McKinley. Half colours for athletics are awarded to Charlie McPhail and Erin O'Neill. I will get those ties for you and we will include you in the a round of applause when we give full colours. Full cricket colours are awarded to, full cricket colours, to Robbie Duff, to Ben Murray, to Jared Binstead, to Dylan Edwin, and athletic colours, full athletic colours, are awarded to Harvey Cameron Barr, Richie Gardner, and Chloe Petrie. Please come up and listen. Harvey, well done, mate. Gary, well done. Get on, Joe, back. Good to play, mate. Go on, Harvey. Go on, Ben. Good one, Ben. I would like to make a special um, acknowledgement also of the Scottish Baccalaureate uh, finishers this year. We offer the Scottish Baccalaureate above and beyond advanced hire. It's an amalgamation of hire and advanced hire, and it's an exceptional achievement to finish that award because so few students in Scotland attempt it, and so therefore it's worth having a go at. Um, it's, it's an amalgamation, as I said, of highs and advanced highs. This is our only our second year of doing this, and the cohort has grown from two last year, who sat it and finished it, um, now to what, five now finishing off. And I'd like just to congratulate those. No need to come up. 
Palcott, Sultan, Freya Simpson, Naomi Loop, Erin O'Neill, Kate Bell, and Ailey Rivers Bell. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> Following on from the Science Baccalaureate, I'm almost done, I promise. Let me bring you back to the tardy grades. I told you I would do that. Why do I mention tardy grades, you may ask? Well, I do so because as we end this school year, I, wish, I do so wishing you all to take on the characteristics of a tardy grade. We have weathered a COVID storm, a hurricane, a veritable typhoon, in fact. More than ever, therefore, our leaders today need to be like a tardy grade. Be like a tardy grade. Tardy grades look like the hookah smoking caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland, and they're often called water bears or moss piglets. They are near microscopic animals with long, plump bodies and scrunched up heads. But it's not these properties that I would wish for you. <laughs> Who wants a tiny, scrunched up head after all? No, tardy grades have something else. While strangely cute, these tiny animals are almost indestructible. In many conditions, they survive by going into an almost death-like state called cryptobiosis. Tardigrades curl up into a dehydrated ball called a ton by retracting their head and legs into a protective cover. If reintroduced to a better environment, the tardigrade can come back to life in just a few hours. Many of the parents in the room will have seen a similar feat with your children in withdrawing to their room, disappearing into their protective cover under the duvet, curling up into a ball and never coming out unless things get better. Tardigrades are the toughest animals on this planet. They are the creature that can withstand anything. In fact, tardigrades can, ex can exist well after humanity is gone. They can survive radiation, boiling liquids, massive amounts of pressure, and even the vacuum of space without any pro protection at all. In one of my favourite films, The Shawshank Redemption, the main character describes geology as the study of pressure and time, and tardigrades have the ability to survive both. In 2007, dehydrated tardigrades were taken up into orbit and exposed to the vacuum and radiation of space for 10 days. On return to Earth, over two-thirds of them were successfully revived when rehydrated. Like many of our leavers on Wednesday night, in fact, all they required to revive them was just a little bit to drink. Not a little bit too much to drink, as some of our leavers found out on Wednesday night also. In, when, in April 2019, the Israeli lunar lander Beersheet crashed onto the moon's surface, thus bring, bringing its mission to an abrupt end. But part of its cargo, alongside classic books and human blood samples, contained a colony of tardigrades, who scientists believe were extremely likely to have survived the impact. Tardigrades can live anywhere. Like the lunar-bound tardigrades in Beershear, you are about to leave the safety of your parents' house and head off to new habitats and new environments. While tardigrades prefer to live in the sediment of the bottom of a lake, or other similar wet environments, many of you will be heading off to student accommodation, <laughs> where damp may well feature as well. <laughs> Tardy grades can survive a, a, a wide range of temperatures and situations, as will all of you, especially when you have to decide whether you shop for, for food for the week or switch on the central heating. Tardy grades can withstand environments as cold as minus 200 Celsius. Now, of course, many of you will not have to worry about such low temperatures, unless, of course, you're heading to Aberdeen. <laughs> Scientists from Harvard and Oxford universities looked at the probabilities of certain catastrophic events, cataclysms, like mega tsunamis or vast asteroids hitting the Earth, or a supervolcano like Yellowstone erupting and wiping out most of the life of the planet, including humans. Only tardigrades will survive we could all be like a tardigrade. Another example of tardigrade's ability is their ability to survive extreme environments. 
the team of a science centre in Bangalore found that a new species of tardigrade were able to protect themselves from potentially lethal blasts of UV radiation by for forming a protective shield. They absorb the harmful UV radiation and then emit it as a harmless blue light. A similar feat is accomplished by many of our students here today who seek out high intensity UV light to also perform, to, to perform a protective glowing shell. In their cases, the colour they emit is bright orange. Tardigrades can also survive immense pressures, up to six times that on the ocean floor, or even being boiled in alcohol. Thankfully, however, due to your EA education, I am sure it is safe to say there is no one in the room who will ever have experienced the negative impact of alcohol, whether boiled, pickled or saturated. So in essence, therefore, be like the tardigrade. In closing, let me finish with another poem in honour of John Meadows, but also for Alistair and for Debbie. This poem has it all. I thought it was going to be impossible to find a poem about tardigrades, but I have it, and here it is. The poem's called The Mighty Tardigrade by James Leftwick. You've probably read his works, John. <laughs> Behold the awesome water bear, a tiny puffy hero who floats beyond our atmosphere at absolute near zero. A brave and fearless debonair who hardly needs to eat. Amoeba here, a dewdrop there, it's good to go to sweets. A boiling hot tub is just fine for rest and relaxation and catch a few tanning rays of cosmic radiation. Wherever it's eight legs to go, it's always got it made and sails the universe's flow the mighty tardigrade. Yes, this last year has been tough, and we've learned a great deal about ourselves and each other due to the impacts of COVID. We've all been weathered, but not in a negative way, in a positive and useful way. Together, we have been toughened. We have been ready, we've been made ready and more resilient and waiting for whatever life throws at us. An EA education will help you always in the years to come ahead but use the things that you have learnt through this pandemic to your advantage. Do not waste time worrying about what you have lost out on, what has been taken from you, what you have lost. Instead, understand how lucky you have been to have had your parents sacrifice so much to send you to this school. Instead, rejoice in what you've learnt, whether face-to-face -face or remotely, about yourself and your friends. Instead, be glad about the person you have become. Be proud in who and how you have adapted to each new challenge and still made it to Exhibition 21. You are ready now to thrive and excel in whatever the future has for you. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Stay in contact with the school. We're always keen to know how you are getting on and what you are up to. Look back on these days with pride. You have all weathered the storm and have been made stronger and ready for whatever the future holds for you all. Floriat Academy.
We now move to the presentation of prizes for the seventh classes. I decided I wasn't brave enough to make a comment about the fact that the season's changed four times during the rector's speech. Uh, I'm not enough of a tardy whatever it was. Uh, does, that, does that count as a geographical reference? No? OK. Uh, I won't tell you that Dr Carr told me on Saturday at the Games that you don't know anything about geography either. So. Uh, uh, Maybe they weren't even accurate, I don't know. Uh, let's move on. The uh, trophy for services to girls hockey is awarded to Charlie McPhail. <laughs> the David Bishop Memorial Trophy for services to boys hockey to Joel Davenport. The Stormont Darling Cup and prize for batting to Ben Murray. <laughs> the Bowling Prize and Trophy to Jared Binstead. The Burma Cup for Best Senior Boys Performer at the Games to Harvey Cameron Bar. <laughs> the Philip Nisbet Prize for Photography to Dominic Thompson. First of the Director of Music Prizes to George Lockhart. <laughs> the 
And also a Director of Music Prize to Nicholas Coley. <laughs> the John Parker Simon Prize for Physics to Aidan Dowie. Both the John Anderson Lang Prize for Biology in Sevenths and the John Masson Gullen Prize for Chemistry to Varun Kulkarni. <laughs> the Analytical Chemistry Prize and the Ian I. Harvey Prize for Service to the School to Halquat Sultan. The Darcy Thompson Prize for Fieldwork, the Jimmy Allen Trophy for Best All-Round Cricketer, and the Hugh Forbes Cameron Travel Grant to Robbie Duff. <laughs> the Seventh Business Studies Prize to Georgie Pringle. The Richard Allen Prize for Economics, Business Studies and Internationali Internationalisation to Mert Yildrim. <laughs> the Advanced Higher Religious Studies and Philosophy Prize to Sarah Phillip. The JDA Gray Prize for Social History, Advanced Higher Modern Studies to Sophia Okasawa. <laughs> the Carmichael Classics Prize in Sevenths to Emily Knurple. Prize for English for Speakers of Other Languages to Matthias Ruiz Becerra. <laughs> the seventh Spanish Prize to Anthony Sella. Triple, the Robert Balfour Prize for German in Sevenths, the Prize for Advanced Higher Computing Science, and an Ian e I. Harvey Prize for Service to the School to David Cannon. <laughs> Should really have said DJ Dave, shouldn't I? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the e and I Harvey Prize for Service to the School to Hugo McPherson. <laughs> also an e and I Harvey Prize for Service to the School to Andy Gillespie. And an e and I Harvey Prize for service to the school to Ailey Rivers Bell. <laughs> the Stevenson Cup for best senior girls all-rounder at the Games to Erin O'Neill.
Pentland Prize for Design Technology in Sevens to Jamie Ray. <laughs> the Chain Art Prize to Sarah White. Both the Advanced Higher Physical Education Prize and the Burnett Trophy for Services to CCF in the seventh year to Sam Chittleborough. <laughs> the Seventh Geography Prize and the James Michael Blair Prize for French in Sevenths to Kate Shannon. Kate definitely got a bigger cheer than you, Sam. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the Archibald Douglas English Prize in Sevenths, uh, the Gordon Honeycomb Prize for Excellence in the Arts, uh, the Director of Music Prize, and the Deputy Head Effa Prize for Service to the School, Sam Bell. The Seventh Mandarin Prize, the Ernest Balfour Music Prize, the Deputy Head Effa Prize for Service to the School, and the Hardman Cup for Services to Music Prize to Lily Penman. The Globe Medal and H.N. Boyd Prize for Mathematics and the James Clark Maxwell Prize to Magnus Harkness. <laughs> and then the Seventh Economics Prize, the Academical Club Prize for Modern History. The Bradbury Shield for Best All-Rounder at the Games and the Rector's Achievement Award to Dave McRae. <laughs> and it's at that point that I invite Sam and Kate to come and give their head of effort's speech. Good morning, pupils, teachers, parents and academicals. Samuel and I would like to extend a warm welcome to you all to our final exhibition and thank you all for your support as we leave the Academy. I for one am so grateful that we can all be together in person this year and also for the opportunity to say our final words. These words are so important to us as we know that we aren't just speaking on behalf of ourselves representing the entirety of the leaving class of 2021. In a year where nothing has been certain and where we have faced many challenges, we really learn to be grateful for everything we have here. <laughs> we have learned to look for the positives in every situation, focusing on what we have rather than what we don't. I feel that within both our school community and wider society, Despite the huge amount of separation, we have never been closer together. Facing a global pandemic has taught us to be more resilient and stronger. We will certainly appreciate life more when it goes fully back to normal and will never take things for granted again. Despite COVID making it very difficult to organize events and activities, our creative thinking and problem solving skills were put into place to come up with ideas to bring the school together, including the online Bake Off, Road to Tokyo, and most importantly, Mr. Bryce's scavenger hunts, which hugely cheered everyone up in the depths of lockdown. This year, mental health has been a topic much more heavily discussed within the student body. 
groups such as Communication and YMCA were started and have been a resounding success. I hope that the coming pupils will keep them going to continue the fantastic work. When I was touring around the various Edinburgh schools in 2013, I picked the academy because of the sense of community and how you are really encouraged to be an individual. You aren't lost in a sea of faces like Harriet's or Watson's, where you can easily get by unnoticed. Here, you know of almost every person and teacher individually, and I think that makes the academy so special and is the reason why we have been able to make so many friends and memories here. However, the Edinburgh Academy is changing. With the ratio of girls to boys higher than ever before, the school already looks different to how it did 10 years ago when the first ever head girl was introduced. I'm so excited to see what the academy looks like when the current guides are in our position, and I wish everybody here the best of luck in the future. I've had a roller coaster of a journey at the academy, but I'm glad that I've had it here as been a safe environment to fall down and get back up. This school has provided the best support possible for me to thrive in all parts of my school life. Everywhere I turn are people willing to help me in any way possible, something which is rare in life. My favourite thing, and the thing I will miss most about the Academy, is the sense of community. The feeling of being welcome and in an environment where everybody is so friendly is something so unique to our school. It is almost impossible to walk from one lesson to another without bumping into someone you know, whether that's a pupil or staff member, which, as Mr McFarlane would know, often makes me late for my geography lessons. We all know that in order to be able to go to the academy, our parents have had to make huge sacrifices, from those early morning sports matches to those late night homework sessions. Our parents have supported us throughout our school careers and continue to do so. And for the, all that, we can say is thank you. The sacrifices you make are truly appreciated by every single one of us. Thank you for all you have done and still do. On behalf of all the pupils, we would love to say a huge thank you to all of the staff here at the Academy. Your constant enthusiasm and determination, especially through online school, hasn't gone unnoticed and is really appreciated. The school wouldn't be the same without you, and we are so grateful for your help in shaping us into who we are today. The Francis Hardy Prize is given to the teacher that has been recognised as making a great impact upon the year group. This teacher has been recognised for their dedication and amazing positive attitude towards teaching. They have been voted for by the Leavers of 2021. This teacher has been hugely popular as is well known for his chat whilst walking across the yard. Could Mr Meadows please come forward to present this prize? This year, the Francis Hardy Prize goes to Mr. Lisher. So, Mr. Lisher is in absentia, so Mr. Meadows gets to keep it for another <laughs> Samuel and I have really enjoyed our time as head effers and have learnt so much, but this wouldn't have been possible without the help of our deputies, Lily Penman and Sam Bell, making up the other half of the core four. Their support, along with that of Miss Slavin and Mr Halsall, has been incredible, and I will truly miss our freezing meetings on the benches of the yard on Wednesday mornings. We would also like to thank Mr Welsh for guiding and helping us throughout this difficult year and working so hard to make sure that events such as this exhibition were able to take place. We would also like to say a huge thank you to the outgoing effort team. You have led the school so incredibly well, especially in such a difficult year. You have all gone above and beyond in your positions, helping lead the school through a time of uncertainty and helping provide outstanding role models to the younger years. The legacy of your time here will continue on in the years to come at the Academy. 
As Samuel and I step down from our positions, we would like to wish the best of luck to Carrie and Finn as they take on the roles of head effers next session. We know that you will do an incredible job and we cannot wait to hear about all of your success. Remember to work as a team. I know that I couldn't have done it without Samuel and his little red book to keep us all organized. <laughs> to all the pupils who remain at the school, have no fear of new adventures or new challenges. Take on that new trip or that new subject the school is offering and give it your all. You're at a time where you can do whatever you want and possibly find what you want to do later in life. Get to know people from all walks of life. Gain a better understanding of the world around you and become a more well-rounded person. This will all take you far in life. Over the past 13 years since P1, I've learned a whole host of things. But the main things that have stuck with me throughout life are the lessons and the core values I've, been, I've gained. One thing that will stick with me for a long time is that I've made a lot of mistakes in my school career. We all do. It makes us human. A teacher once said to me, you learn a lot about the people by the way they react to their mistakes, not the mistake they make. I would just like to thank Kate for keeping me on track during this out of the ordinary year. I couldn't have made it here without her, quite literally. <laughs> and finally, to the sevens. We have heard it so many times already. Take every opportunity you can, as the friends and memories you make here will last you a lifetime. I can safely say that we have done this and are able to leave the academy as well-rounded pupils. Despite the year we've had, I feel so grateful to be able to stand here with you all and share the experience of leaving school. Although it is heartbreaking to leave, the next steps in life are so exciting and I'm sure we are all ready for the next chapter in our lives. We are able to leave the academy knowing that we will always have a home here and knowing that we have been built into strong, open-minded, confident individuals whom I'm sure will be extremely successful in life. I'm so grateful to have been able to know you all and share such amazing years. I don't think any of us can imagine being separated and I know that I will never forget you all. Leavers, it's time for us to go on to our next chapter in life. We are now becoming Academicals, a very unique club that, uh, that has people in it from all over the world. It's a shame that this year has gone as fast as they say it would. I truly have enjoyed many of the moments I've spent with all of you over the past year. You've all taught me such great lessons to help me go further in life. The best of luck to you all as your new chapter awaits you. One final thing to all. Never regret if it's good, it's wonderful. If it's bad, it's an experience. Thank you all and best of luck with what awaits you. <laughs> Rather than saying goodbye, let's say, until we meet again, Floriat Academia. Well, I'll let you sit down. Uh, you might want to get up again as I invite the chair. The Rosalind Gregson Trophy for exceptional service to the school, Kate Shannon. <laughs> and the Gregson Trophy for exceptional service to the school, to Sam Chittleborough. Now the exhibition choir will sing Floriat Academia. We, we have debated COVID principles and protocols about this and decided that we will not be able to stop the inexorable tide of people joining in. 
So sevenths, if you want to stand and join in, you may. You may wish to choose where you direct your spittle. Uh, you may wish to edit that out, I'm sorry. Uh, but exhibition choir, over to you. So the award of Ducks of the School is recognition of the highest levels of academic achievement and has been in existence as long as the school has. If a school, particularly one with the motto always excel, does not applaud academic rigour and endeavour, then it has pretty much lost its way. So it sort of goes without saying that the winner of the Ducks Award has achieved absolute success academically in terms of A's at National 5, higher and advanced higher. And we're talking four of the latter and straight A's in all of them. Sometimes he has made it look all too easy. Mr McFarlane recalls teaching Magnus for National 5 Geography. And the A1 grade there came despite it not, says Mr McFarlane, appearing to be Magnus's favourite subject. Dr Brookman, on the other hand, and himself the owner of a spare brain or two, <laughs> remembered Magnus's phenomenal performance in UK maths competitions, which, as Mr Cook reminded the thirds to fifths in their assembly yesterday, are a real measure to set the brilliant apart from the best three silvers and three bronze awards over his EA years. The great joy here, though, is that Magnus's intelligence is not just kept for deployment in the classroom or exam halls. Mr Duncan commends his hockey playing as demonstrating, and I quote, wisdom and understanding beyond his youthful years, with an ability to see opportunities and recognise space, predicting patterns and events with consummate ease, and which led to his selection for the Scottish Hockey National Academy programme. He chucked a cool 100 plus kilometres into the road to Tokyo Challenge for Coburn. Odd am I guess particularly good for that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not biased. And best of all, sevenths, I need your help with this one, as he and his peers so ably demonstrated at the ball on Wednesday evening, Yes, sir, he can boogie. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
I ask you to applaud the Ducks of Edinburgh Academy for 2020-21, Magnus Harkness. So that uh, leads me to the last trophy of this event, which is, of course, the division trophy um, after a long and very, very competitive year of events. It's been a very different com competition for this year, but I'm sure, um, like me, I hope you've been tracking results and tracking performance. We've certainly had a, a very shifted programme of events. I'm sure, like me, you'll be devastated, for instance, that cross-country did not happen this year due to COVID. My sincere thanks to Mr Tully, Mr Tripney, our new pipe major, Mr Bryce, the division heads, and all the staff who've helped run these events. Huge thanks to Mr Allingham and the P department for organising and overseeing so many of the competitions. After last year's lockdown win by Carmichael, it's been a much more even competition this year and the leaders changed regularly. It's changed hands and it's come down to the tightest of margins. After the games, the pipe band, uh, sorry, the pipe and drum, as well as division soloist competitions and a raft of sporting fixtures, this week we finally had a winner. Only 10 points separated third place from the eventual winner. Only one point separated second from third. It was down to fine margins in every way. Congratulations to all those involved, as well as to the heads of division for overseeing these events and getting so much involvement out of them. And so the winner of the Division Cup for 2021 is... Carmichael. Edinburgh Academy Leavers 2021. Georgia Collins. Grace Edward Richie Gardner Malcolm Weir Kate Baines Alexander Bar. 
Barnes. Mark Burns. Nicholas Catheris. Cameron Campbell. Harvey Cameron Barr. David Cannon. Tommy Chalmers. Nicholas Coley. <laughs> Joe Davenport. <laughs> Finley Demardley. Rohith Devanathan. <laughs> Hector Divi. <laughs> Rory Donaghy. Robbie Duff Dylan Edwin Dennis Eroglu. Haidar Fawaz. No. Okay, no. Sarah Phillip. Andy Gillespie. <laughs> Ines Gurlinur. <laughs> Robbie Hasty. Iona Hughes. 
Bree. Yeah. Ewan Reeves. <laughs> Daisy Ridley Thomas. <laughs> Ailey Rivers Bell. Robertson. James Robb. Charlie Ross. Schillenberg Calvert. Cameron Sell. Anthony Seller. Charlie Smith Arthur Sterling Magnus Harkin, Harkness. <laughs> Lily Penman. Kate 
Shannon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to draw the 2021 Senior School Exhibition to a close. Thank you all very much for coming today. I wish you all an enjoyable and relaxing summer holiday, wherever it takes you. And the Academy looks forward to welcoming back returning pupils, parents and staff in August at the start of what will hopefully be a more normal academic year. Could I now invite Debbie Carr, John Meadows and Alistair McPherson to lead us out.